In the Mesquacook Lake regions of Maine, a team of wildlife biologists trek through the dense forest and search for the den of an animal they have studied for the better part of a decade, the Canada lynx. Its presence goes hardly noticed throughout the northern boreal forests of the United States. Such elusiveness has a part in the reason behind why the state of Maine's Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, partnered with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, is studying the population of the lynx in the regions of Maine's northern woods. As part of their study, the team captures adult female lynx, collars, and then tracks their movements until the springtime when they arrive here, where they start a new cycle of their study with the kittens of one of America's most treasured wild cats. Dr. John Oregon is the chief of the Sport Fish and Wildlife Restoration Program, a division of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The Canada lynx uh, ranges from Alaska uh, all the way across to Newfoundland. Uh, it's, it's a northern species, a boreal forest species, typically that's adapted to deep snows. It, it, it's a classic case of coevolution of predator and a prey species, the snowshoe hare. In order to determine the Canada lynx population throughout the Northeast, the Maine lynx study was born. The study is an arduous process of trapping, collaring, and tracking adult female lynx until biologists suspect reproduction has occurred. During, say, mid to late May, we start to increase those observations so that we can uh, tell whether or not a female is restricting her movements and staying very close or tight to an area, which would indicate that she likely has a den with kittens. Finding these dens are critical to the study. Tagging these animals while they're young allows for biologists to follow the life paths of these animals. Whether they are accidentally trapped, killed, or observed, having the ability to keep tabs on these cats is an essential part to analyzing the Canada lynx population. The way that we approach the den, when we get, say, within a few hundred meters of the den, we would have one individual stock with a uh, Yagi antenna in our radio telemetry receiver and stalk very silently, slowly, and quietly and try to walk right up onto the animal. Months of preparations goes into each visit into the field. After coordinating the proper location from prior aerial observations, the team is ready for their first den visit of the year. During the first trip in, it is up to Maine biologist Jen Vashon to use telemetric signals to locate the den. She would have 45 minutes to report back before the team follows her in. 5161364. Jen has successfully located the den and reports back with GPS coordinates of the den. The team then makes its way through the thick woody growth and begins their work on the litter of Canada lynx kittens. We ear tag the individuals, we put a pit tag between the shoulder blades, a uh, uh, passive integrated transponder, uh, and we take morphological measurements, uh, weight, uh, certain size uh, measurements, uh, we take a hair for genetic sampling, we look for any other morphological uh, marks. For example, we, we notice that some links have white toes, others don't, and it's variable as to how many toes and on which feet. We make records of all of that for later confirmation of identification in addition to the other tags. Then uh, we get out of there as fast as we can and we'll monitor to make sure the female is back on the, on the den and, and uh, hasn't abandoned it. We've never had any case where a female has abandoned her kittens. The work is swift and thorough, and in less than 20 minutes, the team finishes their work and leaves the den, leaving behind them a set of confused, but accounted for, kittens to continue their life in Maine's northern woods. For the next two days, this process is repeated at several more dens. It is an exciting process that brings noticeable satisfaction to all of those involved. Beyond the members of the Link Study team, Landowners and managers are invited to participate in the visits. The partnerships between private landowners and government conservation agencies are critical for the success of projects like the Maine Link Study.
all the owners have been very supportive. They've let us work out of their camp, work on their lands. Uh, we've taken them out on the study to give them a sense of ownership for what we're doing and as well as a sense of pride that they have these animals on their land and uh, they've, they've expressed an interest in protecting and conserving them as well. So it's, it's, uh, the partnership aspects have been very, very successful. Well, currently, as of uh, July 2010, the study is winding down. Uh, we expect the last uh, GPS collars to drop off uh, anytime now, within the next uh, several weeks, and the plan is to wrap up the study. However, uh, there's still some questions that need to be answered. What will the suitability of uh, certain types of habitat that we're seeing on the landscape or expect to see? Uh, the logging practices have changed up there and it's an intensively managed landscape. But we're not seeing these large clear cuts that in say 15 years post cut would lead to uh, good snowshoe hare habitat. But we don't know what those same habitats 15 years old and older will support. So that, that's an important uh, information need that we have in order to make judgments and strategies for conserving links on the landscape in the future.